Now the mid-sized sedan segment is being cannibalized by the SUV market, but that doesn't mean they've stopped making good cars. Today I have with me some of the best from the Far East. We have Japan's benchmark and icon, the Honda Accord, today in touring form. And we have the new kid on the block, the Hyundai Sonata in limited trim. And we're going to see which one is the best. We're going to start with the newcomer, and that is this 2020 Hyundai Sonata. Now, before we talk about anything like technology or design or kind of really the things that make this super new, we're going to talk about the ride and the drive. Now, I've gotten the two top trims of both the Accord and the Sonata here. So this is the limited trim, which means it comes with the upgraded 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes about 180 horsepower and it makes less than the base 2.5 naturally aspirated motor, which makes about uh, 191. So it makes about 11 less horsepower than the base engine. But of course you get better fuel economy. So currently, I mean, with the filming that I've done and the B-roll and it's just been idling and driving up on the highway, I'm still averaging 33.4 MPG. I believe the combined figure is about 31 MPG, which is pretty fantastic considering it's a combined figure. Now that efficiency comes with a trade-off, as you would imagine. So yeah, you're getting 31 MPG and you're under 200 horsepower and under 200 pound-feet of torque. It makes sense that it's not super fast. And that's fine, because what you get here is a really refined driving experience. It's really well sorted. Now from your turbocharged engine, your power will go through an eight speed automatic gearbox. And to me, I think that's great because it doesn't have a CVT. I hate CVTs, uh, but it is push button style. It is surrounded by piano black, which I don't love. Uh, but the push button style does save you some space in the cabin. So you have a really big tray and cubby for stuff in your wireless charging and you have cup holders here and it honestly is fine. You have different drive modes to control how the gearbox uh, selects which gear you're in, where it's going to hold your revs. Um, it's kind of funny because they don't call eco mode eco, they call it smart. Um, but then you have a sport mode which you turn it on and the gears go all, or the, the gauges go all red and rah 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 and then it's just like kind of nerfed and not really that sporty. <laughs> To be honest, most of the time you're probably going to want to leave it in smart, which is eco or just normal. Um, like I said, you're not going to get a lot of performance out of this vehicle and that's totally fine. You just have to be okay with that. But as far as like dynamics and handling, it's actually not bad. I mean, it's it's a mid-sized sedan. It's not got a sporty differential or adaptive suspension or anything, but I mean, the steering feel isn't bad. It's got a decent weight to it without being, you know, overexerting. Um, the brakes are good, the, the body is composed and, and level through corners. It's a it's well-balanced car, it really is. Um, if, there's, if there's one deficiency, it's not necessarily for dynamics sake, it's for more practicality sake. So the power only goes to the front wheels here. It's full front wheel drive, same with the Accord. Um, Mazda's starting to do this with their three. Uh, I think it'll probably come to their next generation six, but they're doing an all wheel drive system. And with the amount that people are flocking to SUVs and bigger vehicles, a lot of them are making the, the case that, oh, it's for snow. We live in Wisconsin, there's a lot of snow, slush, ice, a bigger four wheel drive vehicle makes sense. And yeah, that's kind of true uh, for a lot of the time. So, you know, add a little bit of weight, put an all-wheel drive. Hyundai, you already have an H-Track system. Bring it over to the Sonata. But if there's anything that I can leave you with, it's that behind the wheel, the experience in this Sonata is one that really kind of surprised me. It's very, very refined. It's very quiet. The interior is well put together. There's no creaks. There's no rattles. The body composes itself as we huck it through this corner here. There's the, really the only deficiency is power. If this thing had 100 more horsepower and 100 more pound-feet of torque, it'd be a nice little, nice little sports car. But with that, let's check out the Accord. So we're behind the wheel of the benchmark, the icon Honda Accord. Now this car has been winning 
journalist awards for car of the year, top 10, whatever, you name it, for literal decades. And this current gen doesn't break the trend. Now, just like the Hyundai, we're gonna talk about ride and drive first uh, and talk about all of the other details afterwards. So first thing we have to talk about is the fact that I have the touring trim with me. So we're doing top trumps. So top trim versus top trim, it's even in that regard. However, when it starts to get uneven is when we talk about what's under the hood. Under the hood here is Honda's new two liter turbocharged four cylinder. Now this replaces the old naturally aspirated V6. That is because they're focusing a little bit more on fuel economy. So you're getting about 26 MPG combined from this thing, Highway City. Um, but you're also gonna get a lot more low end torque. And you really do feel that. Definitely feels much more agile, much more responsive and light even. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering exactly how much more power this Accord has than our Sonata friend. Well, this two liter turbo has 252 horsepower and that's about 72 more than we have in the Hyundai. So yeah, you can, you can definitely feel a difference between the two. This one is definitely a much more engaged, sporty, dialed in car. The Hyundai makes no, no effort to be sporty. Now, when you take that power from the engine, it obviously has to go through a transmission. Uh, what I do like here is that there's no CVT in either of these cars, which is great because I hate those super rubber bandy, just nonsense slush boxes. What you have here is Honda's 10 speed automatic torque converted transmission. It's a great little box. It does pretty well. If you really stomp on it, it'll drop more than one gear uh, to make sure it's giving you the proper torque and putting you right where you want to be in terms of the power curve. Now, the thing is, this comes with a manual in some trims, and I believe, I should have checked this before I started this video, but I believe you can get this two liter in the sport trim with a six speed manual and a clutch. That would be the way I would spec it. I would save a little bit money, uh, a little bit of money from the touring and I would get the sport because you get really cool looking wheels, the body looks good, and you get a stick with the same uh, engine. Now, like I said, with that being said, the feeling behind the wheel of the Accord is one of isolation, but you still get a little bit of road noise and a little bit of sportiness. That I think is the biggest differentiation between these two is that this Accord definitely has some more sporting chops than the Hyundai. It makes it, makes it much more, much more clear that this is a more driver focused vehicle and this is probably the reason that this Accord has been winning awards for so long because it does refinement, it does reliability, it does practicality, but it can also bring a little bit of that sporting flavor. Oh, brakes, steering, power out. Yeah, this is pretty good. Let's talk technology. All right, so we're gonna stay with the Honda. And the first thing I wanna talk about is kind of the safety and the technology because Honda Sensing's suite of safety tech is one of the most comprehensive that you can get. Uh, you get obviously blind spot monitor, you get lane keep assist with steering assist, um, you get front collision mitigation, you have rear cross traffic alert, um, head up display. And of course, one of the coolest is the, the traffic sign recognition. So it'll actually sense and use the cameras uh, on the car to read the stop signs and put on your head-up display how fast you need to be going or how fast the speed limit is, I should say. And then, of course, as far as convenience stuff, you have Apple CarPlay, uh, you have Android Auto. Those are both uh, not wireless, but you do have a wireless charging pad. I kind of wish they would integrate that into the same system. Uh, it would be super nice to not have to plug anything in uh, to use Apple CarPlay because that's obviously one of the big selling points of this car. Um, you will have Wi-Fi. Uh, if you get the subscription, you can have Wi-Fi in the car, which is pretty cool. Um, Honda does a really good job with their, their head units. Their touchscreen head unit is pretty good. Uh, you actually have physical hard buttons on the side, which is always one of the things that I like to see. Um, physical tuning and volume knobs, um, all of that stuff that you interact with most, the shortcut buttons and the, the volume knobs specifically, I always like to see that those are, are hard buttons so you can navigate to that really easily and really well right away without fussing around in, in menus. 
And then of course, one of the trickle down things that we've seen from the luxury brands come down to the economy brands now is the fully digital gauge cluster. And Honda's is actually really good. It's not chock full with way too much information distracting you. It's really crisp and easy to read gauges and, and screens and it's, it's, it's well done. So I mean, this, this Accord is, is really decked out, uh, but let's, let's jump into Hyundai and, and see what that's all about. So in terms of technology, the Sonata is all new for 2020. So in theory, it should have the better technology stack. And we're gonna start with safety and I'll say right, right now that it, it does. Uh, it's got all the stuff that the Accord has, blind spot monitoring, uh, lane keep assist with active steer, um, you know, front collision mitigation, braking, um, you know, rear cross traffic alert. But this also has the adaptive cruise with the full stop and go. The Accord doesn't have the full stop, um, so that's something that's really nice, uh, especially if you're, you're driving on side streets or in the city. Um, one of the things I actually um, took uh, my wife, we went up to our little cabin for the weekend, it's 4th of July this weekend, and it's like a two hour drive up there and um, we had highway driving assist on here and it was fantastic. I mean the, the car didn't intervene like at all or it didn't ask you to intervene with the steering wheel much. Uh, it was like every 60 seconds if it's like a straight piece of, piece of road, if it's getting a little curvy. Um, especially more aggressive curves, it'll ask you to touch the steering wheel every, every um, I don't know, let's say 20 to 30 seconds. But it's, it's a fantastic system. Um, I think aside from maybe Tesla, this is one of the best in the business. So absolute kudos to Hyundai for putting this together because it works really, really well. So in terms of safety, it's very competitive and comprehensive and even exceeds the Accord in some aspects. Uh, but then in terms of convenience, you still have all the modern amenities that you would expect. Um, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, again, just like the Accord, not wireless, but they do have the wireless charging pad. Um, it works really well, so I wish they would kind of integrate those systems. That would be super, super convenient. Um, but <laughs> they don't, so we'll move on. Um, one of the things that I really like in the Hyundai is the the head unit. So you have this fully touchscreen head unit and they kind of break it down into three tiers in your home screen. So you can have nav, radio, um, and then you know something else <laughs> on, your, on your home screen. So you can have access to a whole bunch of different information while you're driving. Sorry, the head unit screen is 10.5 inches. It's really big, really, really crystal display, uh, very responsive, uh, overall just a good system. Um, I wish there was a physical like control wheel down at the bottom because I find myself on rough roads kind of bouncing and <laughs> trying to poke stuff on the screen. Um, so that's not perfect. You also don't have the hard buttons on the side of the screens like you do uh, in, in the Honda, but you do have a physical tuning or just, just volume knob, I believe actually. Uh, you have a 12.3 inch uh, gauge cluster. Again, very much like the Accord, very simple, very clean, very you know not distracting but it gives you enough information. And then above that, you have your head-up display. Uh, it's full color. It gives you a crap load of information. Blind spot monitoring's in there, your adaptive cruise, your follow distance, um, speed recognition, and the sp it, it reads the speed limits and the signs. Um, so traffic sign recognition, I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, that's all in your head-up display. So you never have to take your eyes down off the road and onto the, onto the dash if you, if you don't want to. And then another thing that I found really cool that I think a lot of manufacturers are actually doing right now, I know BMW is doing it, Tesla's been doing it with their phones for a while, but you have a digital key. So it's basically this credit card. Uh, it works just like your key fob would. So aside from just not having the buttons to open the trunk or hit the panic button or whatever, um, you just walk up to the car, place the, the little credit card key up against the door handle, it recognizes it, and then you put it in the center console where you would have your, um, your, your phone for the wireless charging, and then the car recognizes that. You can go off, you can go on your way, you don't have to carry around um, this little key here with you. Now there are two more features on this vehicle that I think are reserved for a more elevated tier vehicle. So the fact that you're gonna get this in this, this Hyundai is amazing. Um, one, you've seen the commercials, uh, it's Smart Pack, and it actually is really cool. Basically, um, to make it work, you have to make sure all the windows are up, uh, the car's locked, you hit the auto start button on your key fob. Uh, you can't do that with the digital key, obviously. Um, but you make sure that you hit um, your auto start so the car turns on. Uh, even if you have the wheels spun, as soon as you hit forward or backward on the smart pack, um, the car will straighten the wheel out. 
So if you're wanting to continue the trajectory that you previously set, let's say you have like a circle driveway and you want it to kind of loop around, it's not going to do it. Uh, it's just going to plow straight into your, <laughs> into your house. Um, but you can make it go forward, you can make it go backward. Um, it crawls at like a mile an hour. It's very responsive. The second you take your, your thumb off the button, it stops. Um, really cool system, kind of gimmicky, but it's really fun. Uh, but then the, the second uh, feature that I think is really reserved for a more higher tier uh, luxury car is 64 color ambient lighting. I mean, you get more colors in this than you get in a BMW. BMW, you get like eight or 12 or 16 colors. Um, so when we talk about design and when we get into the interior, especially in terms of build materials, Hyundai has let's call it a stigma or a stereotype that they're working to overcome. And for me personally, I've spent a lot of time around Hyundais in the last year, two years, and I am blown away with what they've been able to do here, uh, and especially the price that they've been able to do it. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, I wanna talk about the aesthetic look up front. Now, I've driven this car around for the last week, and everyone that I drive it past says something along the lines of, that looks sharp, that's a Hyundai, you know, and it's not like a fake Buick commercial, like they really like the look of the car, and I have to say I do too. Um, obviously the most catching thing on the vehicle is the headlights, they gradient up the hood and it's just really, really cool design. The second thing I have to talk about is one of my less favorite things about the design, and it's the grille. Um, I do like this spec a lot with the silver and then the, the contrasted dark, you know, the black grille. Um, it just looks a little bit, I don't want to say dopey, but it's so wide and so low. It kind of reminds me of like a, a bottom feeder fish going like, so I don't know. <laughs> it's just my personal opinion. I mean, obviously this is subjective stuff, but obviously in the front you have, um, you know, various grills and you have a gill on the side in front of your tire on the front. It lo it's an intake because it comes through the wheel well. <laughs> As we get around to the silhouette, or before we talk about that, I actually wanna talk about the wheels because they are amazing. Now, uh, as we talked about earlier, this Hyundai makes no effort to be sporty. The, the Accord, if you want something sporty and more engaging, that's what you wanna go with. This is totally like luxury amenities, like just well-packaged um, design. And I think the wheels totally reflect that. A nice multi-spoke with uh, multiple tones and colors. Uh, the center kind of wheel has this kind of I don't know, like a crushed bevel effect to it. And it's just, it looks fantastic and it totally fits the personality of the car. So again, I think they did a great job with that. Um, but yeah, as we get across to the silhouette, I mean, we're, I'm sitting here looking at it right now and it's, again, just fantastic. There's just, there's, there's enough going on to make it interesting, but not too much to be overwhelming. Um, once you get around to the back, you have a very sharp, um, it's not a spoiler, but it kind of is mimicking one in the trunk. Uh, and then as you get down, uh, you have really interesting um, full light bar of LED tail lights that go all the way across the, the trunk. A lot of manufacturers uh, are doing that. Overall, they knocked it out of the park with the design on the exterior of this car, and especially with the way they've spec'd this one. Well done, Hyundai North America, for sending me an awesome spec car. This, all right, this... and as we get into the interior, this is, like I said, where they might fall apart. Um, but in reality, they pulled it off. And yeah, I'll admit there's some quote unquote cheaper plastics, but they've done things to those plastics to make it look more high end. So the turn stalks, um, your, your blinker on the left and then your, your, your washers on the right, they have, again, the same kind of crushed bevel effect that's on the center cap of the wheel. They move that into the interior. Again, it's that little attention to detail that takes something like uh, a cheap, shiny gloss plastic and makes it feel like they've thought about it. It's not a GM scratchy matte plastic. It's high gloss, it looks good, it feels good. Um, and I think they did a great job with that. Now there is some piano black around the cabin. It's all in your center console where your, your push button gear selector is and you have some up on the head unit. Um, you're gonna get finger smudges there and on the screen. That's just what's gonna come with the territory. You have a touch screen head unit. But as far as the build materials, I mean, the leather is really soft. The, the seats are super comfortable. They're heated, they're cooled. Um, at no point does it feel uncomfortable. The fit and finish is great. Like I said, we've taken this thing all the way up two hours to, to our cabin and there's been no creaking or rattling. It's incredibly, it's shockingly uh, quiet on the highway. 
Uh, there's very minimal tire roar. There's almost no wind noise. This thing honestly sits and rides like a much more expensive car. And I think that's really the best compliment that I can give it as far as the interior refinement. So let's look at the Honda and see how that one does. All right, yeah, and starting from the exterior, I mean, if you spec this thing right, you can get a mean looking car. Um, I think it's really helped with the kind of geometric uh, black grille. You get that with a contrasting body color, like a red or a white, um, even like a gray or a silver. It's gonna look really mean. Um, sport trims look really good with the big wheels, uh, but the touring trim here today is, is really good. This, this car is a lot of front end. Um, that's where a lot of the aesthetic comes from, but it's unlike the Hyundai, it's very, it's very geometric. So you have that rectangular grille up front, you've got rectangular um, sort of headlights, you've got a longish hood, uh, you get around to the side and you have these big, big, big 19 inch wheels. Uh, down, the, down the side of the car you get a very simple kind of one body line. It's, it's pretty sharp, but it just goes along the belt line of the car. That's where you get the sport back. And this, I mean, it's a, it's a great look. It always kind of has been, and I'm kind of glad that they've been able to translate this into um, sedans without sacrificing a bunch of headroom. Um, in the back, it's kind of where the car falls apart for me. Um, the, the tail lights seem like they just took them right off a of Civic and kind of squished them a little bit. Um, it just, there's not a lot going on. Um, it seems like they kind of just stopped designing. It's pretty simple back there, and then they do have, um, symmetrical dual exhaust, so one on the left, one on the right. Um, so I give them credit for that, obviously, but the fact of the matter is it's, it's very apparent that they're not attached to the actual exhaust pipes. It's, it's not bad. It's a, good, it's a good looking, more aggressive, sportier look uh, in, this, in this Accord than it is you get in the Hyundai. If you're noticing a theme that might be on purpose, and I mean, as we, as we talk about the interior too, we'll start with the fact that it's got a three spoke steering wheel. Now this is typically more universally recognized as like a sports steering wheel. The seats are really, really comfortable. Um, you do sit a bit lower in this, I can tell, and that's fine, because that's kind of what you want with a little bit more of a, a fun and frisky car. Um, but you do have heated seats, you do have cooled seats, which is, which is great. Uh, that's definitely what you want to see, especially keeping in line with, with the Sonata. So they're, they're kind of neck and neck there. And then when you get to the dash, again, the design is, is very minimalistic here. Uh, it's similar to how it is in the Hyundai, but I think the, the lines just flow a little bit better in the Hyundai. Um, things are more kind of sectioned off and like the head unit is, is just its own little tablet that sits on top of the dash and then you've got the HVAC under there and then you've got your you know, extra storage and some charging and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just, it, the, the design cohesion just kind of falls apart a little bit when it's up against the Hyundai. If, it wasn't, if I wasn't doing this back to back with the Sonata, I probably wouldn't complain about it at all. But the fact that I just went in from one to the other, it's, it's something that you can definitely notice. But I mean, the build materials on the Accord are, are pretty good. Um, the plastics aren't too plasticky, uh, and they give you some fake wood. So I mean, that's <laughs> it's always kind of nice. But then in terms of rear seat comfort, I mean, the rear seats are, are pretty expansive. Um, it's, it's very comfortable back there. You have three level heated seats in the rear, um, which is something that you didn't get on the previous generation and, and you wouldn't even have heard of or thought of you know, five years ago. So it's, it's great to see that. Um, I think, honestly, the only place that this Accord really falls short of the Sonata in terms of interior design is in the sunroof because you have just a normal, yeah, just a normal size sunroof, whereas the Sonata has the huge, um, you know, panoramic roof. So that's, I mean, a, a lot of the design and stuff and aesthetic is very subjective, but that's really the only massive differentiating feature between the two. So with that, I think that about wraps it up. So let's, uh, let's do final thoughts with these two. So in a tight battle of top trumps, these cars are actually a lot more different than I would have imagined. The Accord is a little bit more fun and engaging, but the Hyundai is just, it's a little smoother. It's a little bit better to look at in my opinion, and it's a little bit more decked out. So like most decisions in this segment, it's going to come down to price. And this top trim, Touring Accord, comes in at just over $36,000, while the top trim of the Sonata is about $33,500. Now, yes, you get a little bit more engine in the Accord, but 
the Hyundai is just a bit more car everywhere else. And when you couple that with the fact that you get massive warranties with the Hyundai, I mean, they have the best uh, powertrain warranty, 10 year, 100,000 miles. They've got five years of roadside assistance included, unlimited miles. That sort of stuff comes on the Hyundai. It's gonna get my money. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Let me know which one you'd pick in the comments and I'll see you next time.